Hello YouTube, welcome back to uh, another video 2 of the Meat LXD 75 series um, videos that I'm going to make. Um, I'm trying to think of a name kind of for the, the videos. Um, I'm thinking probably Man Cave Astronomy. Um, I did a little checking on YouTube. I don't see that the name is kind of really taken. Um, and basically, you know, it kind of fits into the persona of what I like to do. It's pretty much just basic backyard astronomy. Um, you know, just hang out, drink some beers, and, and, you know, we ain't got nothing better to do as far as outside goes, or just, you know, hanging out here at night. You know, just figured I'd make some videos. So, Man Cave Astronomy sounds pretty good, and I think that's what I'm going to end up going with. Um, this is video number two. It is August the 28th. It's about 9.30ish. Um, you know, we're looking at my Meat LXD 75 series 10 inch. Um, we're going to start going over a few things with the tripod and uh, and the head. You know, outside of the scope and the weights, you know, this, this mount's pretty much set up and ready to go. Um, this is kind of how I like to keep it here in the, the man cave, so to speak. Um, you know, just a good way to store it, keep it from getting banged up and beat up. Um, you don't really need to disassemble it any much farther as far as moving it around. Um, I do not recommend leaving the scope in the head and the weights on it because setup all together estimated about 80 pounds of setup. Uh, the scope is about 35 pounds. There's 30 weight, um, 30, um, 30 pounds of weight on the weight bar and the tripod and the rings and, and everything pretty much set up um, just like it is. It's probably pushing about 20 pounds. So. We're looking at about 80 to 90 pounds fully set up, so it's very hard to, to maneuver around. Um, and this is just kind of how I keep it stored. Um, the scope and the counterweights are in the closet back behind the mount. Um, we'll probably break those out here in a little bit, but um, basically what I want to do on the first video um, is actually just kind of go over the mount, go over a little bit of the setup process, and you know we'll just kind of kind of go from there. So. Um, Really what you are looking at is pretty much the the head comes off right here. Um the move that out of the way. Thank God for the short cord, keeps it from bonking on the ground. We'll just set it over there for now. But on the setup, this screw um T handle and everything screws up through the base of the, the tripod here into the head and it holds the head tight to the base of the tripod and then of course your your leg stabilizers you screw up the mount to, to just steady those up it's nice good and steady you know you don't have to worry about bumping it or anything else of course bumping it doesn't ever help anything but um you know as far as taking it apart and really moving it you just unscrew this take the head off collapse the tripod down and you're ready to move it um, in two to three easy little pieces so um, the other thing we're going to look at this is your your altitude bolts up here on your head they they tilt the head angle um, back here you've got your polar finder which has got the cap on this little knob sticking up is your LED um, adjustment for your when you look through the the polar finder there's a little setup in there that you use to align to the polar star um, Polaris and you know we'll go through that um, your right extension lock knob right there your declination lock um, your weight bar which is removable the 10 inch model comes with this little um, two and a half three inch extension bar um, because the 10 inches is, is so much heavier than the 8 or the 6 and this is your counterweight um, lock button you screw it into the bottom once you've got your counterweights on it keeps them from sliding off and hitting your feet or anything and uh, the tripod is a dual leg uh, main leg up here your secondary leg slides out from the bottom you got dual locks you can set it up um, I've got this one set up the tripod is each leg is right at about 12 inches um, brings it up to a nice chest level um, so I'm not really having to bend over bend down to um, look through the telescope may shorten it up to about six to eight inches um, 
you know when i got it out and used it the other night it was a little bit when you get the scope really turned up into the sky high or even slewing back behind um you know it is kind of hard to look through the the scope so i may shorten these up just a little bit we'll kind of give it another go and see um your hand box here um it's pretty straightforward uh scope navigation enter mode go to buttons um these are your your menu up and down help and uh it, it's pretty easy to 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 go through once you kind of kind of sit there and play with it a little bit the manual is pretty kind of hard to understand but of course you know it's about like any other manual it's all technical um looking at the the bottom end of the the declination or um, excuse me the right extension motor box you got your your hbx which is your hand box plug-in power plug-in power switch auxiliary um just pretty much out of date on this model um from what i've talked to meet about and a lot of looking and things that i've done online um you know just it's it's pretty much kind of out of date now so no big deal you know we we got plenty of ways around that um your declination motor plugs in here on this far port um this top motor that's up here um telescope mounting rings um they lock in on the, t the top of the head there so um that's pretty much about it um you got a main telescope mounting ring lock a secondary mounting ring lock um, just in case you accidentally loosen this up and aren't prepared but uh but that's pretty much that's pretty much about it as far as the basic construction goes um you know we've done some modifications and some different things that i'll go through just to kind of kind of help you out and let you take a look at some of the stuff that i've done and uh maybe maybe you can incorporate that into yours so the next series of videos, we're pretty much going to start going through the polar alignment process. Um, we'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at some of the, the modifications that I've done to kind of help that and go through the setup process, um, what you got to do to make sure that your polar alignment is actually a good polar alignment. If you don't do a good polar alignment, there's no point in doing it at all. So um, we'll kind of go through through some of that stuff. and. Um, hope you enjoy these videos and there'll be more to come.